Assalamu alaikum to everyone. I am trying to share my bit through this video that may be useful for those who want to learn mathematics. One of the most important topics of geometry is polygons. So in this introductory video, we are going to discuss about the basic terms related to quadrilaterals in particular and polygons in general. Here is my little introduction. So let us start with the concept of point. Point is considered as the building block of geometry. It is important to know what is point. A point is basically a mathematical object that gives the exact location or position of anything. It simply gives us the position of anything that is placed on a plane or in space. Point is not an object in itself, so it is without length, without breadth and without any height. That is, in simple terms, we can say that point is a dimensionless quantity. By the combination of points, we get a line that may be straight or curved. And further, the combination of lines gives us the plane. And the combination of planes gives us the space. So, we can say everything around us is basically composed of the combination of points. Points are usually named by using the upper case single letters. For example, you can see in the figure we have three points. The red one P, the green one is Q and a blue one R. Now, we always use points in groups and different groups of points are differentiated on the basis of their arrangement on a plane or in a space. One such group is a collinear group. They are called the collinear points. When points are arranged in such a way that they all lie in the same line, then such points are called collinear points. If they don't lie on the same line, then they are called non-collinear points. As it can be seen in the figure, two points are always collinear. As a straight line can always be drawn through any two given points. But if we to take three points at a time, then the three points may be collinear or may be non-collinear. It depends whether they lie on the same line or whether they lie on the different lines. For example, we have point P, Q and R. They lie on the same straight line, so they are collinear. And we have another set L, M and N. They don't lie on the same line. N lie slightly lower than L and M, so they are non-collinear points. Like the collinear points, we have another set of points called as coplanar points. Coplanar points are those points that lie on the same plane. That is the only difference between the two sets. That is, collinear points lie on the same line and coplanar points lie on the same plane. Here, in the figure, it can be seen that there are some 16 coplanar points as they all lie on the same plane. Now, we have another important term called as join. If we consider two points on a plane or in a space, 
then in simple terms we say the distance traveled between them is a joint that means it is simply the path that connects the two points for example if you consider two towns a and b and if you want to go to town b from town a then you can choose any path available that path may be straight or curved in both cases the path is the joint that connects the two points it is not necessary that the path you follow the line that connects the two points is a straight line it can be a curved line as it can be shown in the figure p and q is connected by a straight line whereas r and s is connected by a curved line both the lines whether it is straight or curved both the lines are the joints between the two points now what is a curve a curve is a continuous and smooth flowing line without any sharp turns that means a curve is a line with some curvature or with some bend in it it changes its direction at least once it doesn't matter how small that bend is or how how small that curvature is if there is some sort of curvature in a line then it is simply a curve we have different types of curves depending upon the direction we have two types upward curve and a downward curve upward curve is simply a curve that turns in the upward direction that is if you can draw a curve which goes upwards then it is an upward curve it is also called as concave upwards or convex downwards number 2 is a downward curve a curve that turns in the downward direction is called a downward curve it is simply the opposite of upward curve it is also called as a concave downwards or convex upwards another type of curve is an open curve an open curve does not enclose any area within itself and it has two distinct end points as shown in the figure there are two curves in which you can see there are visible two end points in both the curves these curves does not enclose any specific region or any particular area within themselves another one is a closed curve a closed curve is a curve that encloses a particular region or a particular area within itself it has no particular end points it is actually formed by joining the end points of an open curve together for example circles and ellipses are formed from closed curves if you can look at a circle then you cannot say which one of the points from which the circle is formed which one of them is the starting point and which one of them is the final point there is no visible initial or final point of a circle so we say there is no particular end points of a circle same is the case with the ellipses now we have the last one which is called as the simple curve a simple curve is a curve that does not cross itself that is to say when we join a number of points without lifting a pen or a pencil from the paper then we get a plain curve 
a plan simple curve is a free curve it is not tangled a simple curve changes its direction like other curves but it does not cross itself while changing that direction a simple curve can be open or closed both a simple curve as shown in the figure one is a closed simple curve and a simple curve shown in the figure 2 is an open simple curve